born in Glasgow, Scotland. I weighed six and a half pounds. One hour later, I weighed 62 pounds. <laughs> I have no idea what was in that milk. I'm fat. I'm fat and I'm pissed off. I hate that I'll never be able to wear a thong. I liked it better when they were shoes. It's a simple math equation. Genetics plus cheese, <laughs> chocolate, and potatoes. I love them. Baked, mashed, roasted. Oh my God, French fries. It all equals fat. It's not emotional eating. I've had therapy for that. I have been on every diet known to mankind. Low carbs, high carbs, no carbs. Every diet Oprah has ever been on. I have spent thousands of dollars on exercise equipment from the lowliest hula hoop to the highest tech hamster wheel. Oh, I know how to lose weight. I've lost it over and over again. I have a gold star for losing weight. I have a platinum one for gaining it back. <laughs> but where does fat go? Where does fat go? I'm not a scientist, but I have a hypothesis. These fatums circulate above a hole in the ozone, just waiting for one bad hair day, one teeny emotional meltdown, one mini rejection. <laughs> fat always finds its way back home. When I started writing it, at first I thought it was an exercise in narcissism or vanity, but it was really soon that I realized it was like being a deep sea diver and I was looking for retrieval. I am living with my best friend Beverly and our new friend Katya in an apartment. I love living with Beverly and Katya. We are all messy and none of us care. When we go out, it's like being with beautiful bookends. Beverly is the dark, intriguing one. Katya is the sexy, hot one. And I am the loud, funny one. I hate being the loud, funny one. Beverly has gone off to climb Mount Kilimanjaro with her new boyfriend. Kat is just gone. She called this morning and asked me to sell her bed. She's met the love of her life. She asked me that two weeks ago. I say no. One of her throwaways calls looking for her. I break the bad news. I'm sorry, she's engaged or something, but I wouldn't worry about it. She'll be back on the auction block in a week or two. We start talking. It occurs to me, I don't have to be Monica. I can be anyone. I'm Kelly. I'm a hit. Funny, sexy. He's captivated. We talk every night for hours. He's desperate to meet me. I'm desperate he doesn't. <laughs> Nick, that's his name, wants to know everything about me. Why won't you meet me? Are you hideously maimed or something? Oh, I'm blonde, green-eyed, fully equipped. I'm coming over. Maybe if I were to take a whole bottle of diet pills, or do a colonic, or maybe if I stick my fingers down my throat and throw up everything I've ever eaten, maybe if I were to wrap myself in saran, do a steam. Oh, God. Okay, one hour. I am screwed. I wash and dry my hair and squeeze my body into a full body condom. I yank that bitch up over my hips. I can barely breathe. Oh, I can barely stand. I haul it up as if it were a Polish kilt boss of sausage casing. I try to stand. I pray that nothing will fall out. Oh God, my boobs are pushed higher than flotation devices. Maybe he's into that. I put on a black dress. Black magic is what I really need. Lumps and bumps are definitely smoother. Organs are crushed. <sighs> Maybe he's different. I open a bottle of wine. 
the doorbell rings. I answer it with just my hair. <laughs> oh, God, he's gorgeous. I try to get behind a chair. He's staring at me. The wine doesn't even have a chance to breathe. He's not different. He's gone. My show is a bit of a hybrid. It's not stand-up, but it's not strictly theater. In a way, it's, well, it's definitely autobiographical, but I impart a lot of my philosophy, certainly a lot of my flaws. I'm very happy if you laugh at those. And I think what people come away with having seen it is it's a very relatable story that in some way everyone can filter their life through my very messy one. I need to get away somewhere where I can be alone. Montreal is only a few hundred kilometers away, but there must have once been an ancient ocean between it and Toronto. It's French. Need I say more? These women all know how to tie and twist a scarf. Even the homeless beggar woman looks better than me. <laughs> Here I am, at the open door of a cafe, looking for a table. A hawk-like French woman looks me over. I'm terrified she's going to shout, have you not had enough? I keep my head down and, and find an open table in the corner. The clanging of plates and scraping of chairs and all that fast-talking French alien babble is weirdly soothing. I am immersed in the origami mess of trying to make my scarf look nonchalant and fabulous. When this way too good looking French guy interrupts, je m'excuse, there is a, a place? <sighs> Who invited him? Yes, uh, sure, my scarf is now knotted like a noose. <laughs> Merci, my name is Gilles. My name is Monica. Ah, Monique. Okay, that does it. I've had enough of pretty men. I stand and get ready to leave. You are leave because I have sit here? No, 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 I, I, I have to go. He says something about the snow is big balls and I must sit for the time. I have no idea exactly what he said or why I listened, but I sit back down. The day has turned into evening. His English is terrible. My French is even worse, but we're still talking. Well, maybe I'm talking. Maybe I'm dreaming. He says he wants to show me his Montréal. I venture into the slushy night with this beautiful English-challenged man. I, however, am wearing a pair of ridiculous platform shoes that I don't know how to walk in. Thank God he hails a taxi. I step onto the frozen pavement and immediately slide. I have twisted my ankle. And much like my pride, it hurts. I will take you to your hotel, okay? My hotel. My room looks like the aftermath of a nuclear holocaust. I wouldn't even let room service see it. But I can't walk. I nod. Somehow, we arrive back at my hotel. I quickly take a blanket and toss it over the food entrails that he, for some reason, appears not to notice. Of course, he's blind. <laughs> that explains it. That explains why he's here with me. But this man gets ice for my foot, orders tea from room service, and picks up everything. Then he says, I will make for you uh, the dinner. You will have maybe a bath and relaxing, and when you are relaxed, out you will come and there will be the dinner. Et voila! I'm lying in the bathtub, thinking about everything he has said, and wondering why I feel okay about being in the bathtub naked, which is of course the only way one has a bath. What does he mean? He makes a dinner. There's no stove, there's no dishes. I close my eyes in relaxation. 
Did he just send me in here to rob me? Is this some kind of pervert scam? I mean, no one is that nice. Oh my God, he's coming in. I reach for a towel. Shit, it's a face cloth. <laughs> what do I, I cover my knee? One poop. Oh. <laughs> I have come for the cap, uh, the shower cap. He came in to get a shower cap? <laughs> A little late, I get out of the bathtub and wrap myself in the largest towel I can find, fluff out my hair and pull out my clothes, and limp out of the bathroom. There are flowers in an ice bucket. A salad is in the shower cap. There are two crystal glasses, candles, and two hotel place settings. I have gone to the store, I have picked up a, a baguette, um, some beautiful cheese, some figs, prosciutto, a whole chicken, and I have taken the elevator for every floor, and from outside each room I take the things we have need. <laughs> the flowers are from the lobby. We will put some back maybe later. 